So after yesterday, it has been decided that this is the final episode of Glory Hunter. Is the final episode of Glory Hunter of the season. So, I hope, if Editor Ben's played toyed with you there, I, I'm so sorry. No, it's not the final. Come on, we go again. We go again. We go again. So this was going to be the World Cup today. Some of you may be expecting that, but I can't let this season just pass without any more discussion between the two of us. After the end of the recording of yesterday's episode, I recorded an extra, an extra five minutes. One day, maybe you'll see it. Today's not that day, though. So let's talk through the season, what I'm expecting for next season, if we should leave. Well, you never know. And um, yeah, hopes and expectations. I'm not leaving, obviously. That's, we can rule that out now. But to have a season like we had, to lose it on goal difference, and by the way, we weren't the only ones. Arsenal crumbled a bit towards the back end of their season and, well, they lost the title on goal difference to Liverpool, who picked up their first Premier League title as well. They've cut that out big time. They've, um, yeah, they made a mess of that. Kylian Mbappe, they're 20 goals, top player in the division. I'll see you at the World Cup, Kylian. Cannot wait. And I know you'll be wondering, but there's a game left in Italy and if it goes... Bizarrely, of course, it's not goal difference in Italy, so I don't know how it'll go down, but we'll keep a track. We'll probably go a little further forward to see. Uh, Diego, top, or second top goal scorer in the league and the best player in the division with Aragon as well, just behind him as well. Someone that I admire a lot. So let's take a look back at the season then. Come on, let's let's analyse where it all... where We know where it went wrong. We lost to a meal, viewers. But don't worry, it doesn't look like Fortuna Dusseldorf are going to lose to Freiburg, who are obviously the side coming up from the division. They're in the playoff. They're probably going to... They've already lost 2-0, so... Yeah, that's how they followed up beating me. That's great, isn't it? That's just great. And I've never had the comment section yesterday was unlike a comment section I think I've ever had, viewers. There was sort of this understand. There were not I'd say understanding. So I'm sure there's a few of you that just think, bottle job, idiot, bottle job. I genuinely don't know what more I could have done yesterday. It was just one of those times where I felt so powerless against Petrus Dusseldorf. It didn't matter what I did. We hit the, we hit the woodwork twice and they got a goal. And that was just that was just enough and defeated. And I've got to stop looking at that screen. Beat Dortmund, beat Enemy of the People, Hertha Berlin. And look, we go on to next season now. I don't know if we'll be favourites for the league. I doubt we'll be favourites for the league. And look, but Dortmund have won the cup as well, just to rub it in. Dortmund won the cup. Bayern won the league, so we definitely seem to be the third best team, or I don't know, do you base it on the league? The second just best. Oh. This stings, viewers. It stings. I thought I'd just make this video. I'd be calm. I can't be calm. I'm so sad. It's those defeats. It's the nine defeats. If we can turn some of those into draws or wins, we're going to be fine. Um, It's funny. I know this sounds sort of obvious, but in the games that we're losing, we're just not we didn't score enough goals this season. That is, that is the situation. Even in the games that we won, a lot of 1-0s, a lot of 2-0s in there. And you look at the goals uh, that were scored across the team, and it, the fact we were second is a bit surprising. Diallo and Victor Hugo were 12 and 11, respectively. And then it drops all the way down to 6, and I've got a full-back up there with Werner, Fliesner. And then Kabai's there, Fliess with 5, Maffeo with 5. Assists, I mean, obviously there's not that many of those either, really. But the fullbacks are everything, really. And we're going to keep those two. Well, Maffeo's interesting. Maffeo's contract runs out. And if we can get another right back in, maybe we will. Um, he's on a, a really big contract. So I'm a little bit hesitant with this one. But we'll we'll discuss this, I guess, over the, the summer transfer. And I'll decide uh, a post-World Cup of what we do with him, really. Xavier Kabai is he's an interesting character, isn't he? Because lots of you blame him for yesterday a little bit. Because we, we saw... A good season, but not a great season. And you're probably thinking, well, Benny, being Chris Turlin, is this the end for Kabai? No, this is not the end for Kabai. So moving forward, uh, in terms of our tactic, what are we going to do with the system when we've got Chris Turl coming in? Chris Turl, who is a freak of nature. He's so good. We'll talk about Chris Turl in a minute, actually, because I want to show you just how good that man is uh, and, and what he's going to bring to this side. So we're going to lose Lewis Ricardo. That's the big thing. So the first port of call will be to, for, will be for me to buy, probably, I'm thinking in the centre there, uh, some sort of ball winning midfielder to sit and, and cover from a slightly higher up position. And then with Kabai uh, playing alongside whoever this man's going to be here, and with Victor Hugo probably leading the line. Victor Hugo is incredibly good. He's almost Diego levels of good, and it's kind of going on to the radar 20 years of age he is a superstar so if we can if we can put all of our eggs in the victor hugo basket then that's going to be good news the thing that baffles me really is how we've had such poor years really out of this man and leonardo jose brown i started 15 times three goals i gave him chances 
And on paper, he should be great. He's very, very similar to Victor Hugo, but I've just not seen it. And I, I feel like if I sell him, and you can see he's moved around quite a bit, if I sell him, he's going to go on and be fantastic. And I kind of know that. But at the same time, I've seen so little out of him, I don't know what to do with him. 47 grand a week, he's got a big contract. I don't. I shouldn't let him go because he's a fantastic backup. And if we're going to play this one striker system, maybe that's a system that suits him more than playing two up top. And Victor Hugo may well be the same. And that's what carries us forward. The wing max pushing on is obviously going to be a major factor in all of this. And the two in behind, Chris Turl is going to fill in this role here that Diallo currently operates in. Diallo, by the way, another one who has been fantastic. Like he's really come on. So we're going to have three strikers who play a very similar style of football in the same mould. And of course, across all the competitions we're in the Champions League now, of course, um, we're going to need all those players it probably means that we're going to see the end of Fukunishi Masuyuki who will probably leave us he's got quite a big contract but he's the sort of player that can I afford to have four of very similar strikers only playing one striker is it worth keeping them if we're going to switch with two at any point maybe let's talk about Chris Tell though and the way we're, the way we're going to talk about Chris Tell uh, oh that's not how it's not just not how spell his name first but that'd be a, a positive for us all so, Chris Tull, we know how, I've shown you this screen a hundred times, but what we may even not, have not seen is just how good this man is. 13 goals with three assists, playing from a central midfield role, uh, led by Adam Lalana and Darby County. If you take a look at the Premier League table here, you can see 15th, they've not had the best season. Got negative goal difference. Um, yeah, certainly one of the, the poorer sides in the division. This is where things get quite interesting. When you come to the average rating and... You see the list of players there from Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool, Crystal Palace have got a player there. But if you look at the league table, Palace up in seventh. And then out of what feels like nowhere, really, if I've, I've lost I've, viewers, viewers, I've lost it. So what feels like nothing uh, is that, I mean, there he is, Chris Tull in seventh. He's the seventh best player in terms of average rating. And he's carrying, frankly, a Derby County side that are way below his level. So the fact that we've managed to get him is... A treat, I think, viewers. An absolute treat. So we're going to play him uh, right alongside Kabai. Those two working in behind, floating behind uh, Victor Hugo, who's going to be up front. And of course, then the three behind as well. That's how I see and envisage things going next season with him. Of course, we're going to have to fill big, uh, big boots of Luis Ricardo, who is fantastic and I can see why City probably want to use him next year he's very very good but the diamond goes and a system that I used with Leicester you might remember it when I when I managed Leicester on the base a few years ago people remember that save it's all people call it like the Christmas tree formation and you can you can kind of see why I guess so let's take a look back then at some of these bits and pieces um we were expected to qualify for the Euro Cup 2 but we exceeded pre-season hopes by securing Champions League qualification good that's good we were one of the surprises, pack uh, surprise packages of competition, constantly defying expectations and owing largely to an impressive spell of form between August and September that saw them rise to first. And I don't want to look at this, really. Someone said to me, Ben, can we, can we take a look at the, uh, the the past positions thing again? I mean, there it is, look. I mean, that's obviously that's obviously a lie. Uh, we're not, that's, that, that is making me feel worse. They've not even registered the fact that I've... Mm, <laughs> you can see there look there's there's the boys and from match day 20 or 22 is that it's quite difficult to see the viewers it's um yep yeah, because it's the same points total they've not even changed it that's good can i just have it then can I just have that? I'll, I'll, I'll have won it then, if that's all right. At uh, the end of season awards, uh, Felicia now 46% uh, percent of the vote. Did really, really well. Him and Maffeo, the top fan players of the season. Goal of the season, Matthias Fris, who again, next year is going to be a superstar once again. Uh, Victor Hugo, as long as he says fit. Victor Hugo, signing of the season, young pro of the year. Again, Werner Felicia now, um, look, I'm, I'm very happy. I think he's going to be great again next year, playing at, at left back. Um, moving slightly further forward, obviously we're not too bothered about where the players of now are. Uh, vision for next season, though, and this is obviously a big thing. Thing, um, to work within the wage budget, um, the minimum four-year contract for first-team players. I mean, that's all fine, but it's this bit, isn't it, really? End of next season, grow the club's reputation, challenge with the Bundesliga, first round of the Champions League. I want to win everything, basically. Not the Champions League I will forgo, but everything else, I'm trying to win it. I'm curious to see what pot we're putting in the Champions League. If we're the third best team in terms of we're like a pot three side, uh, we may have two better sides than us in the Champions League, and that actually might be quite tough to get out of the group, which means... 
the Europa League. You see what I'm thinking. We'll see, won't we? I'm happy with the, cur the current vision, though. Also, another thing that I don't think I've even mentioned in the video, actually, but I've ex expanded the stadium. Uh, so by November, there'll be 10,000 more seats so they can be slightly more competitive with the likes of Dortmund and Bayern Munich who have much bigger stadiums. I'm leaving a legacy here, viewers. A, li a little bit of a legacy. All right, I've had a team meeting with the boys. I've told them I expect the title. That's uh, that's a given, really. And um, we'll go on a training camp. Where can we go? Italy? Do we get to Italy? New Jersey? I want to go to New Jersey. Come on, I've been there before. All right, I just want to go further forward. I mean, I want to see what happens with Fortuna Dusseldorf and I want to see what happens with Inter as well. I'm just curious to see if Inter lose the title, what looks like on goal difference, as the stadium expansion plans have been announced, viewers. As uh, Oh, they're, they're making it far bigger than I thought and it won't be complete now until next season. Right. They're going to enlarge it to 57,000. Well, this is breaking news, viewers. There we go. The data analyst facilities have been upgraded as well. Seven players have been called up for the World Cup and, of course, that will be the next video, the World Cup campaign with France. I'm probably going to do it as a part one and a part two. I think that's probably the best way of going about it. So that'll be across uh, Friday and Saturday, I would imagine. Um, I've got quite a big stream happening on Saturday as well, so I'll, be, I'll just mention it. Now, uh, I'm doing a 12-hour Twitch stream, 12 to 12. It'll be good. I'm not even going to tell you what the link is. I feel like I've, I've bombarded you recently, viewers. Ugh. Yeah, they won, a, they won a cup. Well done, Borussia Dortmund. You won a cup. Well done. All right, I'm, I'm clicking forward. I'm just curious to see if there's anything else that we need to focus on, really, or if I'm about to go on French duty, and that is going to round off, then, our adventure of Leipzig. Oh, well, Inter blew it at the end, last game of the season. They didn't even win their, like, their final game. Uh, they lost to Zebra. Palmer and Zebra have put a stop to them, as they are in the Champions League final, though, Inter, against Milan. That is... Oh, that is massive, isn't it? It's the 1st of June. I can't, I can't not find out. I can't not find out, viewers. Come on. Are Fortuna Dusseldorf about to be relegated? Yep. Yes, they are. Good. So I've lost. So, oh. I mean, I can't even. Do you know what annoys me about that? I can't even get revenge on them next season. I can't even beat them twice and be happy with it. Uh, someone pointed out as well, Fortuna Dusseldorf. This makes it worse, really. That was our first result against them this season. That was what we did at home. The team that don't score goals, remember? Do you remember them? Leipzig, yeah? This desk has taken a beating, viewers. A beating. I will say thank you so much for the support. At the end of the day, for me, I'm trying to make entertaining, fun videos. And I've always said that the game takes me on the story and I'll do my best to tell it. And that's always how I feel about this. So thank you so much for the support. And if you're newly subscribed after watching yesterday's video, or if you've been here for years and years and years, and that episode yesterday was up there. It was up there for me. I thought it was like, because I look at it from two perspectives. One, I wanted to cry after I'd seen dots on the screen. It made me feel sad. And on the other side of me is thinking, this is a really like cool video, a really good experience. You can't not think that. I couldn't think that for about, 24 hours um but watching your response we've premiered it yesterday so it went out live i'm, I'm sure there are about 2000 of you there watching live so you know it was it was great it was really good and as a community feel to it it felt great so thank you so much for watching i appreciate it. the support i've had across all platforms recently has been immense so again thank you for that we've got two players in team of the year two is that it in players team of the year and bundesliga team of the year we've got two players i'm just like what we were, we were level on... Oh, I just think that's nonsense, viewers. Football of the year, I mean, Fliesener is up there. He's he's loving life. I just realised we will see him at the World Cup, I think. That's going to be interesting. I'm, I don't know if I'm saying his name right still, viewers. It's, that's still a mystery to me as well. Your under-19s assistant manager, James Milner, has been linked with the manager's job at Solihull Moors. How do you feel about that news? <laughs> I don't care. I've, I've, I've decided to keep my thoughts private on the matter. Um... Good luck to you, James. Good luck to you. To be fair, Solihull Moors, previously managed by Antoine Griezmann on this save. So, big big steps. Big steps for, for James. I'm not going to I'm not gonna persuade him to stay. Go on, James. F fulfill your dreams at Solihull. What a year. We go again. I'm, I'm, we're just waiting on this Inter AC thing. I'm, I'm fascinated by it. Um, but what a year. Andy Robertson's retiring viewers. I mean, are we sad about that? Are we gutted? I'm, I'm all right with it. I hope he joins James, really, at Solihull. What a duo that would be. Just the two of them eating biscuits together. That'd be fun. Oh, that's what dreams are made of. Well, the balance looks pretty good. In terms of money to spend, I've got 29 million there. It might be a sell-to-buy situation, gang. It, that could be quite tough. The original budget was 61 million, but I think they've taken Chris Turl out of it already. I love that scene. I love that scene. I love it more that Cristiano played at AMR. He played at right wing. Which I, I taught him that. I taught him that. Diego scored an SMS in a, on the 123rd minute of extra time. Scored. I mean, they had a man sent off just before. So, I, I, yeah. Yeah, well, look. This is so weird that I'm so invested in other teams in a save that 
I'm not currently the manager of the other teams. Diego put the ball in. SMS Rose. I think he was. He must have been sent off to give away the foul. And um, they did it. Cristiano Diego. I mean, they wrestled it back a little bit there. AC Milan must feel sick. But there we are then. Inter Milan. And what I love about that, actually, I've just, I've just, it's just only just occurred to me. They've won it again. They've won it again. You can call me a bottle job all you like, but I know how to build teams, gang. I know how to build teams. A lot of those boys are brought to that team. All right, then. That is going to bring us to the end of the video. If you've enjoyed it, please do drop a like on it. Again, the support yesterday was immense. And if you could do the same again today, that would be fantastic. We love with care, then. For me, let's mention until next time, let's not bottle it next season. Let's win it all. We've got a World Cup first, though. I mean, that'll be a good semi-final exit, won't it? That's going to be great.